I recently released a video talking about building budget PCs, and I have something to admit to you. I caught myself slipping. You see, I was talking about AMD APUs and NVIDIA GPUs. For some reason, this wasn't even part of the conversation. I mean, when you're talking about Pac and Biggie, little Uzi Vert isn't even in the room. I feel like AMD and NVIDIA are just like, This is the Intel Arc A380, and I picked this up for about 30 bucks on Newegg last week. Now, along with that price, you also get a game called Ghostbusters Afterlife, as well as Gotham Knights, and two pieces of content creation software. So the question is, is Intel giving away these games, or are you getting a free GPU uh, for purchasing them? Or is it a paradox and you lose either way? Keep in mind, I have no idea if this thing is good or not. That's why we're gonna bench it today. So yeah, so this guy is the A380 Challenger uh, from ASRock, and we're making some pretty big claims on our product page. So the card itself has six gigs of onboard video memory. Pretty sweet, right? The other claims that we're making here on the product page, nano thermal paste, nice. I don't know what that means. We have precise screw torque what does it mean and we have 8k resolution support no I'm not a big youtuber and right now i'm focusing more on budget hardware that anybody can get their hands on i don't have a 4k monitor but i would venture to guess that even in 1440p this thing is a struggle bus but 8k i would venture to guess that at 8k the only thing that you're watching on your computer is your desktop does have ai upscaling and the ability to encode av1 which AV1 is pretty sweet. It seems really good, but that is not why we're here today. We're gonna put this on the bench. We're gonna throw some stuff at it and see if the Intel A380 is worth it. Let's go. Before we get into the benchmarks and things like that, I just want to take a quick second to thank every single one of you who saw the AI video and thought that my channel was good enough to toss a subscription to. It means a lot to me. Thank you so much. We're actually at like 1,080 today as, as I'm checking this, but this is three days before this video goes live. So I don't know where it's going to go in the future, but thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Consider this video the 1K subscriber special. All right. Let's get into it right here. We're gonna kick off this test with a little bit of the old and good Heaven on Medium. The A380 pulled out a score of 2,097. I'm not too privy on Heaven scores, however, but that is better than what the 560 Ti pulled out when we benched that. By the way, look at this sick graph. We've averaged 82.5 FPS. Our minimum was 60.6 .6 and our max was 137.6. We had 1% lows in heaven of 44.3. Not bad, right? Wrong. I'll tell you why later. Now in Time Spy, we pulled a score of 3,129 dominating that 2020 office computer, as we like to do here. The video test was not the smoothest. The CPU test was fine. Temps on the GPU stayed below 60, while the temps on the 5800X did get pretty toasty. So a hot CPU. Next to Fire Strike, again, the GPU testing was not smooth at all. The CPU test was great. Um, we finished that test with a score of 7,146, absolutely decimating that 2020 Office computer, the bane of my existence, my arch rival and nemesis. However, what I thought was a little weird was that the benches on both Time Spy and Fire Strike mentioned uh, I should be able to run Fortnite on this thing at 155 FPS plus at 1080p ultra. The lie detector test determined that that was a lie. They must <laughs> they, they must have added in an extra digit by mistake because there is absolutely uh, no possible way. It was averaging 15 to 20 FPS on 1080p in ultra. Now I will say though that in Fortnite on medium settings in DirectX 12, it has to be DirectX 12, DirectX, DirectX 11 is a choppy mess. With reflections turned off and post effects on low, we were able to play the game at a respectable frame rate. 
Keep in mind that this video recording clip that you are seeing was accidentally recorded in 30 FPS, and I'm too lazy to go back and play more Fortnite to get that fixed. Just know that we have a graph here again. We were averaging 74 FPS with a minimum of 43 and a max of 111, our 1% lows for Fortnite at these settings were 38 frames a second. So sick, we have a decent gaming GPU on our hands, right? Well, hold your horses. Let's play some Halo Infinite. Oh wait, we can't because it's terrible. Now, Halo Infinite is a demanding title for sure. I'm not going to refute that. I think that is very accurate, but we are getting some mad hitching on full low uh, with reflections turned off as well. And it makes the gameplay fully, absolutely unplayable. On low, we average just 43 FPS, which would be playable had we not been hitching every five seconds. Uh, we had a minimum of, uh, you read that right, four frames a second on this graph here. Our max did hit 66, holy cow, uh, but the choppiness did uh, take that down a lot with our 1% lows being literally one frame per second. He's trying his best. Okay, we got to give him a little credit. Now, I have no bench for Counter-Strike. Uh, for some reason, you know, MSI Afterburner doesn't like to pull up the overlay, so I can't ever tell this bench information. However, on low, we were pulling a very respectable 150 FPS. So if you just wanted a semi-okay, not the best, not even semi-good frag box, I'd still buy something else. But this will do. Now, I did add one more game to this test and I will be adding another game at the end of the month Doom Eternal because that is in the humble bundle choice and I don't have to pay for it so it's coming to me well you know I paid the monthly shut up it's coming the game that we added was Apex Legends so I could test out another esports title and here's a graph we didn't do too bad our average frame rate for Apex was 69 <laughs> uh, our minimum did hit 18 due to some loading hitching when the map changed from the pre-game to the post or to the middle of the game you get what I'm saying uh, but it was still very very playable we did hit a max of 129 fps and our one percent lows for apex did come down to 29 uh, again that is one percent lows so not something that uh, you're going to see very often one percent of the time actually i did find the game to be very playable and it was semi enjoyable also i didn't chop like fortnite did so again I don't know. So there you go. Some testing from the Intel Arc A380 from ASRock. They gave it the name Challenger, but the only thing that this is challenging is my patience. <laughs> Would I buy it again? Absolutely not. I'm mad at myself that I bought it the first time, but also I'm glad I did, but also no. Now what I find weird is that DirectX 11 for Fortnite is a choppy nightmare terror zone, uh, but when you turn it to DirectX 12, it's fine because Intel Arc likes DirectX 12 from what I hear. Uh, however, Halo Infinite is a DirectX 12 only game. And for some reason, that game is a choppy nightmare mess. Apex Legends was pretty smooth for the most part. I just don't understand. The inconsistencies is just actually wild. Now, Intel is new to the GPU game and I'd like to give them some time to cook and hopefully a few years down the road we're gonna have another competitor to the market but right now i just don't think that's happening guys that's the video if you liked it like it subscribe to stay up to date on all my latest content and i will see you in the next one take care